this sport uh, is uh, something which is, I would say, unique. The game has a fast pace, a strategy. We live for challenge, uh, for rising always the bar. It was obvious for us that there was something super interesting to invent. What does it mean to go beyond, to go further than expected, to raise the bar, to defy limits? In this podcast series, we unleash the game-changing stories that take Lamborghini beyond the status quo. And meet extraordinary people across the world who go beyond convention to forge their own incredible journeys. My name is Giulia Salvi. And I'm Tim Bravo. Together, we are your hosts. And this is Beyond, a Lamborghini podcast. In 2023, we celebrated 60 years of Lamborghini and 2024 marks the 60th anniversary of the production at our legendary Lamborghini manufacturing facility at the heart of Sant'Agata Bolognese, which is known and famous for crafting some of the most exhilarating super sports cars on the planet. And over these 60 or 61 years now, this iconic factory has occasionally stepped beyond its automotive heritage. Like, for example, in April of this year, where Lamborghini embarked on a unique partnership with Babola, the esteemed maker of tennis, badminton and pedal equipment. And together, they harness their unparalleled expertise to create an exclusive series of pedal records. The BL001 pedal record is a masterpiece of manufacturing skill produced right here at the Lamborghini factory with only 50 exclusive units to be made. The record sport of paddle is making waves around the world, combining elements of tennis and squash and emphasizing quick reflexes, strategic thinking and teamwork. Paddle originated in Mexico in the 70s. It has always been particularly beloved in Spain and Latin America, and today it's one of the fastest growing sports globally, with particular popularity here in Italy, drawing in players and fans with its dynamism and thrilling pace. And in this episode of Beyond, we're honored to have two special guests, Ranieri Nicoli, Lamborghini's chief manufacturing officer and a huge pedal aficionado, like I know, and Aldric Bourgier, chief innovation and development officer at Babola. And I'm sure as well he is very much into these sports. We'll discuss insights on their journeys of expertise, the fusion of technology and craftsmanship, and how both brands strive to transcend the ordinary. Aldric, Ranieri, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to everyone. Welcome. Paddle is a relatively new and pioneering sport, but Ranieri, you may be our chief manufacturing officer, but I understand that you are a keen paddle enthusiast too. How did you first get into paddle and what do you love about it? Yes, yes, I, I first of all, I'm a sport lover. And I start to play paddle, I would say, three years ago. When uh, I think in Italy it was start to 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 grow this uh, this sport uh, in the television first, and then was start to 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 build uh, a lot of paddle clubs in all uh, in all the city, also in my city, and this was the reason why I started to to try, and I I was immediately in love. Uh, this sport uh, is uh, something which is I would say unique. It's quite easy to start to play. You, you can have fun immediately. It's relatively easy also to organize. You, you need only other three, let's say, colleagues to do it. And uh, but at the end, uh, the more you are start to 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 play, and the more you start to to go to get in, then you you can also feel that it's a sport quite complex. Uh, you can have a strategical. It's as any way a team sport, even if you are only two against other two. And uh, but it's a lot of uh, strategic uh, um, thinking. It's not easy to to make uh, say the point. And, uh, and also in terms of fitness, it's quite complete. So you can have also a good, uh, a good, uh, uh, let's say, training uh, all the day. So that's that's why I love it, and uh, I try to to do it at least every week or a couple of times, a couple of days in the week. I can I can absolutely understand your your passion, Ranieri, for paddle. Myself, I I love the sport, but I actually got 
into those type of sports playing tennis. I've played for more than 20 years and that's where I first heard the name Babola, of course, because Babola is uh, used by world champions such as uh, Rafa Nadal, uh, Carlos Alcaraz and many, many other tennis superstars. Has been producing tennis equipment for almost 150 years now, I believe. But uh, Aldric, uh, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about uh, the company's history and how the sport of paddle became a more recent endeavor in the company's history. The Babola company is a French company, which is a family-owned company, which is 150 years old. We will celebrate the 150 years anniversary next year, in 2025. And uh, the origin of the company is truly linked to the invention of the tennis strings. In fact, the funny story was that the first tennis strings were invented by Babola in 1875, just one year after the invention of the tennis rules, the game itself. So that's a, that's a, so the, the, the name Babola and the company Babola is deeply connected to the story, to the history of tennis. And through, uh, through all those years, uh, and the, 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 the family, the, the Babola family is still owning, of course, the, the company. And uh, Eric Babola, who is our president at the moment, is the fifth generation of president of the of the family Babola family, um, and uh, along those years, the, the the company has expanded itself through uh, a racket sports uh, product, uh, racket strings, shoes, and um, and uh, when it comes to paddle, in fact, the the story around paddle uh, for Babola is not new. Uh, it's more than 20 years ago that uh, that uh, Babola identified the paddle as the growing sport, a very interesting sport in the in the racket sports industry. And uh, in 2001, we we launched our first paddle racket. So more than 20 years ago, and since then we have launched uh, specific shoes, specific rackets. And uh, one of the key things that show is showing that we are still investing a lot in that sport is that uh, one year ago we invent we invested in a in our small factory in Spain, which is the earth of the, in Europe of the paddle sport. Next to, next to Barcelona, we, we invested and launched uh, our, what we call Babola Paddle Studio. And we are still investing a lot uh, in that. And when it comes to the, to, the, to the practice itself, it's obviously growing like hell. And we estimate that in 10 years from now, the number of paddle players will be twice the number of tennis players. So it's growing everywhere and especially, of course, in Italy. But Aldric, what makes it so popular? Like, what what is it that is so that that grabs you, that excites uh, so many people? More or less, I'm fully aligned with uh, what Panini said. Uh, first of all, I would say the game itself. The game is crazy. The game has a fast pace, a strategic, very interesting to play, but also very interesting to watch. So for us, that's a very very interesting uh, sport, exploding sport, which may have influence on other sports. And um, uh, it's more than a sport. As you said, uh, for us, we consider and we know, and that's the way we approach it. This is a, a social, convivial uh, sport, talking to friends, having pleasure and fun with friends. Even if you are not a super tennis player, immediately, quite immediately, you have fun. And you, it's very, that's a fantastic sport. It also has a very glamorous style, but uh, speaking to Ranieri, speaking of where we are today, we're here in the manufacturing facility at Lamborghini's headquarters, where the exclusive rackets will be manufactured alongside the dream super sport cars we're known for. Ranieri, as Lamborghini's chief uh, manufacturing officer, this is your domain and you're responsible for production, logistics, industrial technology and infrastructure here. In short, you build dream cars. How does it feel to be the helm on the 60th anniversary of production? Yes, uh, it's uh, it's an honor for me. I would say, I, uh, every time uh, I came to the factory, every day I'm always super happy to come and to to do my job. I think I'm really honored and blessed to be uh, in my position. Uh, actually, I was thinking uh, almost 30 percent of uh, of these 60 years uh, are covered by by me in, in this position. So. I, I'm also super happy to that I, I was here uh, starting from 2008. So it's it's a, it's a dream. 
it's a, it's a, for sure it's an art job, but uh, it's something which uh, every day makes me happy. And, and this is, I think, the most important things. How did you join the Lamborghini Group, Ranieri? Uh, actually, uh, I'm not a car guy, I have to confess. I start, oh. uh, yeah, I'm an engineer, <laughs> by the way, but I'm not a car guy, or at least I didn't, I didn't start as a car guy, now I am. Uh, I'm an aerospace engineer, uh, so I study more or less uh, uh, space uh, and uh, rockets and something like that when I was young. This was my, my, first, uh, my first passion. Then uh, life is strange, and so I started uh, uh, after the, the university. I started immediately in, uh, in the automotive field, uh, in, a, in a, the company, the biggest company at that time, Italian, which was producing cars in, to, in Turin, so you can imagine uh, the, the company. Uh, and I spent some years there. And then after I moved to, from Turin to, to Bologna in another sm small company, uh, which was doing a different, uh, different uh, object, uh, um, gearboxes for industrial application. And uh, in 2008, uh, I had the chance uh, to have the possibility to join uh, Lamborghini. Uh, at that time, Lamborghini was uh, for sure a uh, let's say growing company, but a different size, a different uh, dimension, different product, uh, also maybe different brand images at that time. Uh, so it was a, a challenge. And I said, yes, I think it's, uh, I saw the potential, uh, at least in terms of industrial uh, uh, development. And then uh, I started and I'm still here. Be before I ask you now, Ranieri, what you think the Lamborghini production stands for, and like what the key values or characteristics are, I would like to ask Aldric, because it's uh, curious, um, however, that uh, Babola, having their own uh, long-standing expertise and the technological know-how and excellence as well, of course, in the field of rackets, why did you decide to bring the manufacturing and uh, technological expertise of the uh, BL001 pedal racket to Lamborghini and to, to have it created here in Sant'Agata. The, the spirit in, uh, in the Babola company is always to push boundaries around performance and innovation. And it all comes to our, our ways of working. We are absolutely convinced that, of course, we have a know-how, uh, 150 years, uh, there's no question, but that the future will not be only built uh, on our own and that the future is about collaboration with experts. And that's the, the big reason why we were so happy to have discussions and to start working with Lamborghini because uh, Lamborghini is, a, of course, an expert, especially in, in composite technologies. And then uh, for us, it was like uh, uh, obvious that uh, if we are talking to each other, we'll create something new and totally different. And again, it's, it, fit, it fits with our ways of working, trying to, to go outside the company to talk to experts and to see different lights on our product lines and to try to invent something totally new. Can you tell us about the genesis of this collaboration? Did you first recall like the first time you spoke to each other and what are the goals and expectations for this partnership? From my side, I guess, uh, as I said, when I started to play paddle, I didn't have even the rackets you know, the first time. So I was, uh, I was in the club, they gave me one racket and I uh, start to ask, uh, I'm an engineer at the end, uh, the material uh, I was doing. Uh, and then I start to realize that the material of the uh, normal paddle racket is similar to the material we are using uh, on our super sport car, carbon fiber, leather, the paint. So I said, well, then there is something which can be uh, a link between us and, uh, and uh, this world uh, of paddle. And then I start to, inside the company, to push for having a collaboration and to try to understand if we can really, since we are mastering in our, uh, let's say, uh, field, this kind of material. As uh, Aldrich said, uh, we are doing, the, uh, for example, the, the monofuselage, so the chassis of the Revuelto is done in carbon fiber in Santa Cruz Bolognese. We are doing all the interior of our super sport car in leather inside our company. So we have this kind of expertise. We are painting uh, with hundreds of color our, our car. So I said, let's try to find uh, a possible partner. But since Lamborghini 
we think we are in the, one of the best position, we need to have one of the best or the best producer of powder rackets. And then start Aldrich, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And, and in fact, uh, what's interesting in the story in between us is that uh, I would say that's not only a question of technological things. That's also a question of human relationship, because I, I can tell you that the first time I came into the, the company and then I remember having some discussion with you, Henry, uh, we al already felt like we are similar. I mean, the way we talk, the way we are passionate about what we are doing, uh, it's somehow similar. And for me, of course, the technology and uh, is important, the expertise is important. But we try to always in everything we do, we try to find the, the what we call the family spirit or at least the, the fit in between the persons. And it was very interesting. And um, and I would add something which is uh, when I came in, to be honest, I was I, has, I had no clue on how the, the 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 cars and especially the the cars frames were built but in few seconds you discover exactly the, what you said Ranieri, that the the technologies the materials the process are so similar that it was obvious for us that there was something super interesting to invent and i think it's it's, it's more than a normal uh, i would say a partnership because uh, we have done also things with in other field with other but this we are producing so it's really a, a collaboration which is beyond the normal uh, i would say uh, partnership you can have it's, it's really a deep collaboration because we spend a lot of time together our technician with the, of course the help of the people of babola because we are a car manufacturer we are not uh, let's say we didn't have any uh, expertise on on paddle but uh, we were together working together to really uh, let's say obtain this kind of uh, results for such a paddle enthusiast uh, like yourself, uh, Ranieri, I'm sure this is more than just a normal collaboration. Is it also a huge responsibility that someone from outside your uh, normal field of expertise has placed this, uh, this uh, challenge, this project in your hands? Well, yes, it's it's it's. I would say it's for sure. It's it's the fact that I'm was I'm a paddle enthusiast. I was pushing a lot. Uh, to get this kind of project done and also mm, try to, to push uh, my people uh, to find a way to do this. Uh, it's clear that uh, we have a process which are done for automotive, uh, which are for sure flexible, but uh, in, a, in a certain extent only to do cars. And to stretch this kind of processes to produce from uh, a plant which is doing cars, a uh, uh, rackets is not really easy uh, in terms of uh, same technology, in terms of competence, in terms of mindset, but I think was a challenge for us. What Aldrich said is, is absolutely true. We are also passionate. We live for challenge, uh, for rising always the bar. And this project was, uh, I think, the right one for me to show that we can uh, build also different things, uh, not only super sport car. So you both learn from each other, but you're both experts in technological innovations in your respective fields. What are you most excited about in the current world of innovation in 2024? For me, what I'm excited about uh, is to see how fast everything is going around us to invent new ideas and more than inventing, creating and, and delivering new ideas. The speed of the technologies and the speed of, uh, of new ideas is totally crazy. And then uh, when it comes to technologies and especially uh, composite technologies, uh, you see some 3D printers everywhere. You see some super interesting technologies everywhere. And for us, uh, that's what's exciting, knowing that one of the key topics, maybe we'll talk about that later, but is also around the way that this um, carbon uh, composite technologies are going the path of sustainability. And uh, that's a very, very impressive, uh, let's say, world at the moment around that for me. See, I, I can agree in terms of uh, speed of uh, innovation and changing, uh, it's really a crazy period in this moment. Uh, for, for what concerns automotive and for what concerns uh, production then, uh, which is my field, I would say that uh, the automotive world is in the, in the middle of a revolution in terms of uh, contents, uh, in terms of uh, uh, changing of architecture of our car. Uh, 
uh, from the, the, the powertrain, which is coming, becoming hybrid uh, and in the future uh, also electric uh, in terms of uh, uh, software on, on the car, in terms of uh, complexity, I would say. And this complexity is, of course, for us a big challenge because uh, uh, we have to produce uh, more and more complex car, uh, I would say intelligent car, and then we need to do also intelligent process and the possibility to, to have a connection between the production process and the car, which is produced, and to have, a, uh, I would say, a, a dialogue and, and a sort of link between the two things, uh, it's, it's something which will change probably also the way of producing cars. And this is something which uh, is, we are at the beginning, uh, is involving also the artificial intelligence for sure, is involving um, the software, is involving the process, but, uh, and this is something which will stay forever unique in Lamborghini, uh, it's always then involving the people, uh, to our workers, uh, which has to be the protagonist of our production process, because this is uh, our uh, way of doing the, the, the cars at the end. Andrik just mentioned a very uh, important and interesting topic, sustainability. Uh, Ranieri, it does not come uh, like automatically to think about sustainability when you think about super sports cars. But uh, I know that especially for you, it's been a big project, not uh, just uh, since yesterday or since it uh, became popular, let's say, or trendy. It's been uh, within your books for a long time. Can you can you explain a little bit about the sustainability strategy? Yeah. I can tell you that, uh, as you said, the team, uh, we started to, to, to work and to really uh, be involved on the sustainability uh, things uh, starting from 2008, 2009, when I, I was coming to, 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 to Lamborghini. And so much before these topics uh, are so hype now and so popular. So it's really something which we believe. We believe that uh, uh, we are born in Sant'Agata Bolognese, we are born in the Motor Valley, so in the Emilia Romagna, in Italy, um, we need to really preserve all the, the environmental where we are producing. And this is a, a duty, this is something which we need to do it. It's something which is, we feel inside our, our really our heart. Uh, we started with uh, a lot of projects, which I don't want to mention all, everything, but for example, we are certified carbon neutral, uh, CO2 neutral starting from 2015, so really, a lot of time, we have uh, several projects, uh, three generation plant, uh, district heating, so we are receiving, for example, hot water from uh, another plant uh, outside uh, Sant'Agata. Um, we have a park, Lamborghini Park, uh, seven hectares of, uh, of park, which we are uh, giving also in terms of the, let's say, availability to the community. We are doing also activity there, sport. Uh, we have uh, bees, uh, we are doing honey, I know that you know, Tim. And, uh, but uh, why we are doing this, for example, because the bees are one of the most uh, sensible, I would say, uh, KPI in terms of uh, pollution. They are, I would say, 500 meters from the factory. So uh, they are in the, in the, they can really uh, show us in case we have some problem. Uh, we are monitoring them. We are measuring all the, all the parameters. Uh, so we can also see if there is any, any issue or not. So we are doing a lot of things uh, just uh, to finish the building with char, which are with the energy um, efficiency and, uh, and something which is, a, is not, uh, it's a path. It's not. Uh, we are not at the end. We have to do a lot of things. Uh, we have a lot of projects more, but uh, it's something which started a really long time ago, and we are really believing that we need to preserve the area where we are working. Aldrich, would uh, you like to share with us your 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 point of view about sustainability and its importance? We made the decision two years ago to include uh, sustainability as uh, one of the five pillars of the company. Um, we have a lot of initiatives on our products. So we are trying to, to use natural fibers. We are using flax instead of carbon, flax instead of, instead of uh, glass fibers and so on. So we have all, a lot of initiatives on our product, on our packaging. Um, I would say that uh, at the moment, uh, we are working super hard to deliver the, 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 the the big strategy uh, around the company on what it, when it comes to sustainability. Uh, we are not communicating at the moment too much on it because we are preparing it because one of our main targets 
is to be true to our players, true to our consumers, and we want to make sure that we tell the truth, which is not always so simple because, as you can imagine, uh, we are a piece of a bigger cake, an ecosystem where we are working with players, we are working with clubs, we are working with uh, partners for production. And one of our key things is to make sure that we animate the full ecosystem around us and that it makes sense and that this, this is true. That's what we are working on, which is not preventing us, again, on working on the future of our product, eco-friendly eco, eco product, uh, circular economy, things are in the heart of our innovation uh, roadmap. Uh, Aldric, what you say is very true. I think uh, authenticity is uh, key when it comes to sustainability. You don't want to do any greenwashing. This is the same here at Lamborghini. This doesn't help anyone uh, and it will always uh, backfire. Absolutely no option. But speaking about authenticity, Ranieri, um, what makes Lamborghini so authentic beyond sustainability? What is Lamborghini all about? What do people experience when they come and visit you and your team here in the production halls of Sant'Agata Bolognese? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, it's, uh, it's not easy to, to explain. Uh, would much be better if uh, someone can, can come and as a We are uh, hosting and we are uh, open to factory visit. We have a lot of people which are coming. And uh, But I, if I can say something, first of all, uh, starting from something we are celebrating these days, uh, we we are celebrating not only the 60th anniversary of our production in Santa Cata, but also the 50th anniversary of the Countach production. We are doing the cars, uh, the actual, the Revuelto, the Temerario we presented some days ago, in the same building uh, uh, which was used uh, to produce uh, the Countach uh, and all the super sport car. And I think that this kind of spirit uh, is still present uh, inside our factory. When you come in our factory, I think, first of all, uh, as a visual uh, uh, impact, uh, you don't think it's a factory. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, cleanness, uh, there's a lot of uh, order, uh, no noise. Uh, it's uh, something which we want to have it because to produce such a perfect car, you need to have a perfect production process. And when is everything uh, uh, order clean and clean, then you can really Uh, don't make mistakes uh, and everything can flow in, uh, in, a, in, in the best way possible. Uh, another point is uh, it's, uh, it's about the people. Uh, I said before, uh, our production process is quite complicated. We have a lot of uh, complex and technological uh, process uh, when we are discussing about uh, carbon fiber or painting, uh, which uh, allow us to do this car in this kind of different colors uh, and this kind of um, uh, carbon fiber monocoque. But uh, the center of our production, what I'm really uh, proud is the skillness and the, and the competence of our workers. Our production process at the end is manual. There is a lot of craft material. And this is something which is, uh, I would say, unique. It's not so common in the automotive world in our production is something which we must have to be flexible. Every car we are producing is different one to the other. Absolutely. Different means that there is uh, contents which are unique for the customer that order this car. Means that in terms of complexity, we are really uh, at the maximum level of complexity. And to steer this complexity in the best way possible, Uh, for sure we need to have system and we have software which are helping the people but the core is to have people which are motivated which are uh, skilled which are trained and this is something which i would say is uh, is, uh, is the is the 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 key things uh, i see you can see in and you can feel and you can uh, uh, experience when you are coming in lamborghini all the people that are visiting us they tell me that you see they see people which are motivated Uh, really keen to do the things and uh, something which is uh, make me proud because it's, uh, we invest a lot on this. Uh, I think it's one of the value added uh, we can have on, uh, on, our, on our production process. And what about you, Aldric? Uh, Ranieri just talked uh, with us about his leadership, uh, a point of view. W which are the principles that you, Aldric, uh, follow to ensure your team remains motivated in what it does? I would just jump on the, the comment uh on, on the, the way we use the, the craftsmanship and the power of the workers, 
For us, that's very important. Um, for composite production, we are used to play with technologies and craftsmanship. Every every composite production is doing that. And uh, for us, um, more than composite production and racket production, that's also a principle uh, that we are using in our own factory where we are producing our own strings for racket, where we need to listen, we need to talk, we need to involve all the workers in the way and in what we do. And not doing that is just impossible in fact and more than possible or impossible that that what delivers the value of the product that we are delivering and um, for paddle we we started uh, and we launched uh, our own small factory in spain two years ago and by the way we, we hosted uh, some uh, Lamborghini guys uh, with pleasure um, talking about the way we are producing those rackets in Spain and so on. And we had, we had a lot of fun. And then uh, that's exactly what we are trying to apply. Make sure that the workers into our factory, we are talking to them, we are listening to them, and we are building, co-building the future racket. And again, that's also valid for our own production uh, or strings. So for me, this point is very important and I'm, I've, I'm fully aligned and uh, by the way I was super impressed by visiting the, the factory in Santa Agata of course uh, but uh, we took a, a lot of learning around that but it was also in our DNA to make sure that our workers our guys have the opportunity to talk to everyone and make sure that we are all aligned in production so craftsmanship very important and then when it comes to uh, your maybe your second question around the R&D and how to motivate Alors, I would say that my experience is showing that um, uh, that's a team sport. Uh, you cannot decide on your own to do something without not too much talking to the guys. Uh, what matters in terms of pleasure of working, because we are talking about that. We are passionate people. And we, want, we want to have pleasure working because pleasure is delivering performance. Uh, then that's also a question about being, ser being demanding on what we expect but being super supportive. And that's what I'm trying to balance, let's say. Demanding and supportive to, to the guys. And there, there's also a question of value on the way we behave. And there's something that we are trying to, to, to push inside the company, which is we take it serious. I mean, our work is serious, but we don't consider ourselves as, as serious guys. And, and we, we, we want to make sure that the relationship in between us are fun enough, respective, Demanding, yes, but the, the, the question around the value for me is very important in the team. Well, it sounds like many, many similarities between Babola and Lamborghini, not just uh, in the production um, uh, excellence, uh, but also in the, in the way and the attitude, no? in, the, in the way that we um, uh, engage with, with each other. But in this exchange, um, Ranieri and Aldrich, uh, that you have had uh, with your teams, uh, what would you say? Uh, is the learning or what can the automotive industry learn from the sports equipment industry and vice versa? Um, a lot, I would say a lot. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, for us it's always a chance uh, to when we are working or when we see another production process uh, to learn something because uh, we, we, we don't think uh, that we are at uh, the peak of, the, of, uh, of anything. Uh, we have to learn from the others in general. With Babolat, uh, we uh, really experienced uh, their competence. Uh, for us, was a completely new uh, production process, as I said at the beginning. So the material maybe was similar. I would say there was some similarities, but the, 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 the let's say the uh, the object at the end and the performance of a paddle racket was for us maybe at the beginning a bit underestimated. We think it was a more a simple object, and then when we were discussing with them. Uh, seeing all the tests they were doing, all the specification, all the details uh, which are important, they said, ah, oh, wow, then it's not <laughs> really a simple object, it's really complicated. And then uh, for us was uh, pushing the boundaries because it's a process, uh, as I said, um, uh, designed to do cars, uh, which is, of course, uh, complicated, but they have their process, their uh, parameters. And to change completely in the same in the same factory, so we are not doing this in a different area. So with the same people in the same factory, to do from a monocoque to a paddle racket, uh, it's 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 uh, a lot of flexibility. And as I said, we learn a lot about uh, how complex and how uh, a lot of how many how many uh, let's say details you need to to. 
to know uh, to do a, ca- a paddle racket. It's really something which for us was uh, quite a uh, unknown before. Do you both have a favorite or a memorable moment from your careers? Uh, yes, a lot, I would say. Um, Pick one of it. <laughs> I'll Just one. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, uh, so th- there is more than one, and uh, but for sure I will. I will try to do. Uh, f- Except I collaborating s- with Pabola. Uh, for sure, this is the <laughs> first one. <laughs> this, uh, uh, exa- exa- <laughs> this, which is the top. Uh, but uh, for us, uh, you know, when we are doing a new car, when there is the what we call the startup production of a new car, it's always something unique because it's 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 like uh, I would say your baby that is, is born. And behind, uh, you know, all there is all the, the, the problems, all the effort, all the months and months and months of work. So for me, one of the best moment uh, uh, without choosing the, the model, because I saw I had the fortune to, to see a lot of models new from the Aventador to the Huracan, the Urus, now Rewelt and Temerario. It's this moment when you have the startup production of new car, which is uh, It's uh, something which is finished from one side, but starting which is also starting from the other side because then it's something which is, uh, is, is then uh, lasting for, for years. So it's a moment in which really uh, is the end of a phase and the beginning of a new one. So I would say this is uh, for me something which I really proud and I remember always with, uh, with, uh, with the happiness and proudness. And what about you, Aldrich? Yeah, I have the same kind of memories <laughs> uh, uh, because for, for me, what, uh, all, all my best experience in uh, I, I'm, I'm working in the sports industry since uh, more than 25 years. And then um, uh, my best memories are always like uh, launching a new project, launching the prototypes and seeing that your ideas are existing in the prototypes and that the customers or the players are playing with it, have a lot of fun with it and have the, exactly the comments that we are expecting, let's say, in terms of performance and so on. So it all, it, it has always, my best memories has always been around uh, teamwork, delivering something totally new, which is validated by, by the outside world. So that's a kind of birth of project, of product, uh, where it's, it's always a, a great pleasure. Talking about products, because we've been talking about the collaboration, about passion, about leadership, about sustainability. Let's talk about the product one second. We've mentioned it many times, the BL001. Aldrich, what does it stand for? What makes it so special? Uh, we only know the name, limited to 50 units. It's being produced in Santa Agata. What makes it so special? What makes it so special is that we used the, the technologies and the process of the Lamborghini a way of producing super sports car frames and we transferred it to a paddle racket and uh, that's special and it I would say uh, using those process and those materials and those methods enables us to go in a different direction compared to what we are used to do uh, and we reach some characteristics which are totally new for a paddle racket and especially there's one characteristic which is interesting for us, which is showing the way in the future, is about power delivery. How, f- how strong such a racket and such materials are delivering power to the ball. And uh, this was thought that we also had initially, but using the process and the collaboration with Lamborghini made it possible to reach those values. And for us, it's obvious that uh, uh, the BLZ1 is a very, very special racket, of course. But for us, using those technology and, and sharing those uh, experience with Lamborghini people uh, is showing the way for the future racket that we want to build. So very special. I'll have to borrow the prototype from you because Ranieri <laughs> challenged me to, uh, <laughs> to a match just after the rec- uh, just Absolute. before the recording. Ooh, well, yeah. I'll, I'll steal it, it from you. Actually, I'll give it back. I'll give it back. I'll, okay. I'll just borrow it. But I, this way, maybe I have a chance against. Let's Ranieri. see. Let's see. I have a bubble out. <laughs> but then let's see. Let's see. Then. <laughs> let's see. So now it comes to me, like really natural, to ask what's next for this partnership. We can do some spoilers. Is there something we can actually tell the people listening about this collaboration? What What's next after the BL 001 and this 50 pieces? Uh, After zero zero one, there's many numbers. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. 
So we, in fact, we already started working together on uh, two additional rackets, uh, which are using the, the learnings from the BL01. And uh, we are at the moment prototyping uh, the, the future BL02 and BL03, on which we are working in Spain into our Babola Paddle Studio, which is a place where we are experiencing new ideas and so on. And uh, the future for us is to be able to have uh, more quantities than 50 produced next year uh, using uh, those learnings and those materials and those way of seeing the paddle racket in the future into our small factory in Spain. So that's what we are working on at the moment. I don't want to, to say more than that at the moment, but we know <laughs> that this collaboration, uh, of course, we, we are super fan of it and we want to make the best of it and again, Take, uh, take time with Lamborghini guys is, is always a big pleasure in terms of human relationships. So, uh, yeah, we will use it. What, what does the future hold for Lamborghini, Ranieri? Even if you won't build any more pedal records after the, this first project, uh, what let's will see, you... Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Huh? Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Now, the future for, for us, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a complex future, but exciting on the same side. Uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, for sure, in terms of um, production, uh, we need to, to cope, as I said before, with the products which are becoming more complex. And this is something which, is, uh, which will be, uh, for sure, a challenge for our production process. I guess, uh, as I said, that, uh, and we are working on this, that, uh, the, um, as I said at the beginning, the artificial intelligence will play a major role uh, to help us, not to substitute the, 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 the skill of our work, as I said at the beginning, it's, 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 uh, the craftsmanship will stay forever, but to help us uh, to really produce uh, this kind of complex car, uh, always different one to the other, but having the maximum quality and the maximum, uh, let's say, attention to the details. So I see this as a trend which we need to use uh, more and more, uh, the artificial intelligence, and of course also, um, uh, all the software uh, which are which is uh, which is uh, which is behind. So it's something which is um, exciting uh, because the, pro the the products will become uh, complex. As I said, uh, we are working on this. We are preparing uh, uh, ourselves to uh, now to produce the Temerario and the future to to go also, as we said uh, uh, in in uh, in uh, in the electrical uh, uh, model. And this is uh, what we are doing now in, uh, in our production process. And on the production side, beyond cars, since the company has grown so much, more people have joined Lamborghini, you'll even, I learned, will be building buildings, more buildings and more parking spots. Yes. So not just cars. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I know that this question is, <laughs> no, it's, 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 not, it's quite, uh, uh, I would say yes. Uh, this is uh, something which is, uh, I was, the fact that we are growing and uh, we grew a lot, uh, it's fantastic because uh, I can tell you that uh, 10 years ago when I came, also no, uh, much more, when I came, the production we were doing in one year, now we, we have done in one month, last month in July, we have done a production of car, which uh, at the beginning we were doing one year. So it's really a fantastic story, uh, fantastic grow, uh, a lot of success. Unfortunately, there is some side, uh, let's say, uh, area, and uh, and, and uh, the, the we need to really uh, to complete uh, the 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 factory and the headquarter in the best way possible. We are working on this and it's another challenge to do this uh, while we are uh, producing always with the maximum uh, speed. But it's something which is also super uh, uh, interesting and uh, we are working on this team, don't worry. So with, the, with this promise from Ranieri, both thank you very much for your time and for being here at this podcast. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds, not just for the collaboration, but also for Lamborghini and for Babola separately. I think huge success lies in front of us. Thank you very much, Aldrich Ranieri. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this month's episode. New episodes will continue to land monthly on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube and Lamborghini.com. Please do subscribe wherever you get your podcasts for more extraordinary journeys into the beyond. My name is Tim Bravo. I'm Giulia Salvi, and this is Beyond, a Lamborghini podcast.